dealing with the issue of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. She has proposed this week, and I hate that we're just now able to get to this, but she proposed a 70% tax rate in an interview this past week, and ever since that has happened, even though the border has eaten up the vast majority of our coverage and news coverage overall, Vox has put out an article basically trying to explain how the 70% tax rate is going to work really well, which is beyond stupid. But this is the case that the left is making now. So this Vox article tries so hard to explain how the 70% tax rate is going to actually work and be beneficial and going to be able to pay for the Green New Deal that Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is, is putting out there. So they tried to hedge it with correctly pointing out that this would be her top tax rate. So granted, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez was saying 70% for the absolute top. So as high as you can go, the people that are making over $10 million a year, those are the people we're going to tax at the 70% rate. So this is their excuse in saying this is why this would actually work is because she's only talking about it for the top tax rate. And here's the problem, though. As Vox.com itself pointed out just a few months ago, implementing her policies, all the policies that she's talking about, would require at least $42.5 trillion over the next 10 years. $42.5 trillion. To put that into perspective, there's roughly $70 trillion in the entire Earth. Like if you were to take up the value of all the money, all the currency in the world and put it together, it winds up being roughly 70 trillion. And somehow America, one country by itself, is supposed to produce enough to pay for all of these programs, even though they're going to cost 42.5 trillion over the next decade. And we only pull about 3 trillion a year in tax revenues and spend about 4 trillion a year. That's why we keep adding on to the debt is because we're bringing in 3 trillion, we spend about 4 trillion, so we acquire roughly a trillion dollars of debt every single year because we refuse to cut our spending. And so that means that if we were to add this 4.2 uh, 42.5 trillion over 10 years, that's about 4.25 trillion every single year, which means that 8.25 trillion would be what we have to make, what we have to bring in in taxes to be able to pay for all of her policy proposals. So to put this into perspective, even if you taxed all millionaires, everybody that makes at least $1 million or more, if you taxed all millionaires at 100%, take every cent that they have, that would only raise about 3.8% GDP according to the IRS's own calculations. And by the way, that would not even balance our current budget. So let's say we implemented none of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's new programs that are going to cost $42 trillion. Even if you just did that, if you still tax the millionaires at 100%, took every dime that they made, that wouldn't even balance our current budget. It wouldn't even make the trillion dollars we need to get to a surplus. And somehow... Taxing them at just 70% and only people that are making over 10 million, 10 times the amount that we're talking about, is supposed to pay for doubling the size of our federal, more than doubling the size of our federal budget. Yeah, I'm sorry, the math just does not work out there. Not in any way, shape, or form. And furthermore, uh, according to her proposed tax, is everybody over 10 million at 70%, which would raise about... 0.25 GDP. So a fourth of a percent GDP is what that would result in if we implemented her 70% tax. Remember that the goal that you would need, uh, that if you tax everybody at 100% over a million, that's 3.8 GDP. So this is roughly, what, a twelfth of that? Yeah, there's absolutely no way that that is going to pan out. And that's assuming that not a single one of these millionaires would even try to evade taxes. So if we're talking about taxing somebody making over $10 million a year at 70%, we're just assuming based on that figure, based on the figures that I just gave you, that it would only raise about a half of a percent of GDP. That we're just assuming that that person wouldn't even attempt to evade taxes, attempt to move their money somewhere else. We're just assuming that everybody would be like, oh, darn, I have to pay 70% on taxes now. And yet still, 
even though that's super optimistic and would never happen, we're still only raising half of a percent of GDP. Now, let's look at it from the corporate side because we've been talking about personal taxes. If we doubled the corporate tax rate tomorrow, the CBO estimates that it would raise about 0.7 GDP. These are infinitesimally small numbers. And this is the problem with the tax the rich mantra. It doesn't raise that much money. Even if everybody cooperates and pays their fair share and doesn't even try to evade taxes or try to get around the system, it still doesn't raise anywhere near the money that we would need to even get back to a government surplus with the programs that we are spending money on now, much less adding new ones. And so the numbers just do not work in their favor. Now, it, when you're talking about the corporate rate, that's assuming that nobody outsources, nobody tries to move their company, even though we've seen that happen back when we had very high corporate taxes. Now we have about average. But, you know, that we're nowhere near the lower end of that spectrum. Now, let's just ignore that $1 trillion in debt. That $1 trillion in debt that we acquire every year because we're only bringing in three, uh, about $3 trillion. So we'll operate off of saying that we need $7.25 trillion to be able to pay for all Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's program. So we're just pretending that that trillion dollars of deficit spending doesn't even exist to go through these figures. Because, again, like I've said, you always want to assume the best in other people, or you always want to assume, uh, give every advantage to the other side when you're dealing with stats so they can't accuse you of being biased. So let's just ignore that $1 trillion, take it right off the top. We're looking at a goal of $7.25 trillion every single year. So to do that, you would need to raise taxes 242% across the board. That's the kind of numbers that we're dealing with. In other words, if you are a family of four making about $51,000 to $82,000 a year, your new tax rate, and that is if you have a family of four, that is by no means living a luxurious life. That means your brand new tax rate is 53%. So if you're the definition of a middle class family, actually this would kind of be lower middle class now, of a family of four, you're still being taxed at 53%. More than half your income is going directly to the federal government. So if you make 70000 uh, let's let's just say that you make 70000 that means, according to this new tax rate, that would need to be there to support Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's policies. That would mean that 37000 of that 70000 goes directly to the Fed, and you have $32,900 left for you and your family of four to live on. 32900 left for your family for the entire year. That's what you've got to make do on. Oh, but wait. There's still the state taxes. That's right. You don't just pay federal taxes. You also have to pay taxes to the state. So if you're in the state of Alabama, and keep in mind, Alabama is on the lower end of state income taxes. We actually, it would be easier for us because we have a lower tax rate. But if you're in the state of Alabama, if you make that $70,000 figure that we're using as our hypothetical, as our benchmark, that is going to be an additional $3,500 to the state, which means you and your family of four. Now, if you live in the state of Alabama, a state with a low income tax, you have to live off of $29,400. You want to talk about not giving people a living wage? You want to talk about people not making enough to make ends meet? That's it. $29,000, less than $30,000 a year to feed a family of four. But just to fuel, I don't know, free health care for illegal immigrants? Universal college for everybody? I don't know that your children are going to survive long enough to make it to college trying to live off of that. So this idea that socialism takes all your money? Yeah, it absolutely does. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's policies are asinine. And if she tried to implement them, it would bankrupt the average person. And remember, this is somebody that's making 70000 bucks a year. This is not somebody that's doing really well. This isn't some you know, corporate trust fund baby. This is a guy that's barely making it, and they're wanting to take over half of his income. And that's just to the federal government. That would mean in the state of Alabama, again, a state with low income tax, 58% of every dime you make 
is going directly to the government. And you and your family just have to live off the crumbs. You have to live with whatever's left over. It is absolutely ridiculous. So she also pointed to tax rates that were equally high in the past. The, the person that, that wrote this Vox article. And one of the things that they pointed to was FDR and Eisenhower. By the way, it was also about that high under Kennedy, 70%. But Kennedy slashed them. And he specifically slashed them because he says when you slash taxes, you increase revenue. Even Kennedy, who was a Democrat at the time, saw this high tax rate and said, yeah, this is not sustainable. And let's also keep in mind that Eisenhower and FDR didn't exactly preside over economically prosperous times. The ridiculous tax rates and spending under the New Deal resulted in a depression that lasted eight years longer than it was supposed to. There was a depression, a stock market crash, larger than the one that happened in 1929 in 1921. And what did Harding and Coolidge do? Cut taxes and cut spending, and it lasted about six months. The Great Depression lasted eight years because of FDR and Herbert Hoover's stupid policies. They tried to spin their way out of a depression, and it didn't work. It didn't work then, and it's not going to work now. Uh, they, this article also claims that rich people like Zuckerberg, you know, the founder of Facebook, that he's not going to care much. He's not going to care much because, you know, at a certain point, you just have so much money, you would barely notice a change in your lifestyle if they took more. Yeah, but I've never met a rich person that didn't want to keep as much of their money as possible, and I don't blame them. They work hard for it. I mean, Zuckerberg created a really useful tool, and he ought to be well compensated for that, even though I don't like the guy much personally. But the problem with that is that's not reality. Whenever we see a massive increase in taxes, without fail, rich people always defer and wind up moving their assets somewhere else. It's the way that it always happens. They create a show corporation. They uh, hire, hire a team of lawyers and attorneys to move around the tax system, and it usually works. See, the problem with this progressive tax system here or everywhere else that it's been tried is that the super rich people, they figure out ways around it. They always do. So the only thing that this really prevents, the only thing that this really stops, is that people that aren't really rich but trying to get rich, it stagnates advancement. People that are making some money, but they don't really have enough to hire a team of attorneys and lawyers and accountants. So they just kind of get stuck in that weird limbo place where they're having giant chunks of their income taken and aren't able to make enough to get by. See, the progressive tax system doesn't prevent wealth. There are still a lot of wealthy people, even though we've had a very progressive tax system for a long time. The only thing that a progressive tax system stops is people that want to advance, people that want to do better, people to make that next step up the ladder. It makes it very, very hard for them. And unfortunately, that is the case that we see nowadays. So let's look at a quote from this, uh, from this article specifically. It says, empirically, CEO pay and pre-tax inequality is higher in countries with lower top marginal tax rates. In a lower tax country, by the way, yeah, of course, because you have a progressive tax rate. Anyway, in a lower tax countries, they believe CEOs work really hard to maximize their own profits to pay, whereas the higher tax countries, uh, they accept lesser compensation, which leaves more money left for other people. Well, it does decentivize work, which means people at the bottom get less. If you're paying your CEOs less, if you're mandating that they can't make over a certain amount of money, then they don't work harder because they can't adva advance past a certain point. If you cannot go past a certain point economically, there is no incentive for you to work more, which means that overall your company is less profitable, which means your employees also get less money and there's less of them. There's less jobs provided. So yes, a profit-based system that encourages economics, that encourages free market economics and competition gives you better results because those CEOs do compete and do work to make more money. And in the process of doing so, they make other people richer, not only with better products, better technology, but also the people underneath them make more because the company expands, they get more jobs, they get better pay. And so this idea that you can just 
disincentivize work and stagnate it like this and not have an effect on the economy is just stupid. And it continues on. Regardless, however, the 70% figure isn't just a random number, a young House member plucked from thin air. It represents cutting-edge cutting edge empirical research on how to maximize federal revenue. Yeah, cutting-edge research? You know what that means, right? If we're talking about economics, cutting-edge is just code for, well, it's theoretical and it's never been tried. That's really all it is. They're saying, well, it's based on this new research. Yeah, well, you're living in the world of theory. Let's look at how it actually turns out. Everything in this paper is based on theory. Based on the theory that when you raise taxes, rich people are just going to say, oh darn, looks like I have to pay more taxes now and not try to evade it. It's also based on the theory that people are going to continue to work whether or not the government takes all their money and that they're going to work at the same level and they're going to work with the same ferocity even though they're not getting any money out of working harder because the government takes their money if they do work harder in advance. This whole thing operates off theories that do not pan out when applied to the real world. And yet, they're saying, well, it's cutting-edge empirical research. Yeah, because it's never been tested before. Because it's never been proven, there's never been a system that implemented this that it actually worked. In fact, it has been disproven over and over again. Whenever you take away the incentive to advance and to work, you always get stagnating technology and an economy that does not move forward. If you don't believe me, look at Venezuela. If you don't believe me, look at the Soviet Union. Look at China under Mao. I mean, I could go on and on and on with this. When you de-incentivize work by charging the mess out of people with taxes, you always wind up with a populace that does not work harder to advance. It's the problem with socialism, as Margaret Thatcher once said. Eventually, you run out of other people's money. And here's the thing. I love this quote because this was Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's response to all this because people are being very harsh on her and I just gave you the numbers. None of the math adds up. She's saying, well, you know, nobody asked how to pay for the Space Force, which is just rich on a number of levels. First of all, the Space Force, that would be a branch of the military, which would mean it is constitutionally sanctioned. It would be something that the Constitution allows the federal government to do. But even if you take the constitutionally ar uh, constitutionality argument out of it, because there is nothing in the Constitution that allows you to take money from one citizen to give it to another citizen. That's nowhere in the Constitution. But ignore that argument just for a second. Let's look at it just from the economic standpoint. The Space Force would be essentially a branch that gets taken out of the Air Force. Air Force is already doing stuff in space. And so when you're talking about funding... You would just take the funding that you're spending on the Air Force and reallocate the part that's going into the space program to the Space Force. Whether or not that's wise or not, whether or not it's a good idea or not, is a different matter. But if we're talking just about funding, just about what we're doing, then actually people are asking about how do you pay for the Space Force, and the answer is you take the money that's already being used on the space program in the Air Force and move it over. So the idea that that was her big sticking point is like, well, no one, no one ever asked about how to pay for the Space Force. Yeah, because there's already a plan in place to do it. And the numbers add up and it's feasible. And so unfortunately, she does, she shows an amazing lack of information on this. If she wanted to draw a comparison, Trump's infrastructure proposal would have been a much better way to do it. See, that's what's so funny about this. I tell people all the time, even though I'm not a liberal, I could make the liberal case for these things better than most liberals could because they've never been actually instructed on how to argue logically. And AC, AOC is a glaring example of that. So, you know, I don't really want to take half of my hard-earned money to fund her stupid leftist policies, because it would bankrupt the country and it would hit poor people harder than anybody else. Because in socialism, inevitably, there's always a few fat cats that wind up at the top, and they wind up just fine. But everybody else just gets more poor. All socialism does is spread the misery out to more people. Okay, so y'all know I'm a big stats and numbers guy. So here's some fun facts for you. People that like this video and subscribe to the Tactics Radio YouTube channel are 200% more likely to be satisfied with their internet video content and 400% more likely to have a reasonable, rational conversation about religion or politics with their friends and neighbors. 
Also, four out of five people that subscribe to this channel have more successful and fulfilling lives. And that fifth guy was just a social justice warrior with a stick up his butt. Also, another fun fact, 82% of all statistics on the internet are completely made up.